Okay, great that you're here. Uh, my name is Iwan Rodin. I'm one of the developers of System Modeler. I work here in Champaign. Together, together with me today, we have Leonardo uh, from the MathCore team in Sweden. We also have Anneli from the MathCore team in Sweden. Um, and this talk is actually three talks. So to the price of one talk, you get three. And uh, it's, it's going to follow the, the, the outline that I have up here. So we're going to start with system model in education, focusing a little bit on how system model is doing in academia, what, uh, what's happening in there. Uh, after that, Anneli will present on a applied example with system modeler in, in a uh, hydraulic configuration for um, airplanes and look a little bit at fault analysis there. And then uh, we've saved the best for last. Uh, Leonardo is doing um, a talk on connectivity and connecting devices to system modeler and different ways to uh, use your models in other systems. So that's really interesting and I'm looking forward to hearing that too. So um, system modeler in education. First of all, um, if you look briefly at the timeline of System Modeler, in 2012 we released the first Wolfram branded System Modeler, uh, version 3.0. Before that it was called Math, Math Modelica. In 2014, um, this year, we released System Modeler 4 with the substantial updates. And I've uh, mentioned as a se separate bullet there that we have a, a library store. And this library store gives us a possibility to continuously add updates to System Modeler without updating the full software. Well, why does that matter? Well, because if you want a new functionality in System Modeler, you can use a library or develop a library. And when you have a library, you can distribute that on our library store. So just yesterday, we released a new library called Model Plug. Uh, it connects Arduinos to System Modeler, and that's one of the things that Leonardo will show uh, later today. One of the things that we discovered for our first-time users, people that haven't seen System Modeler before, maybe haven't done modeling and simulation before, is that it's a, it has been a steep learning curve. And we're doing a lot of things to kind of help uh, smooth this learning curve out so that you uh, have different help systems available at all times. So uh, some of the things here that I want to point out that we've done in version four um, is a new book, uh, Creating Components from Mathematica, and also a real-time link. So let's look a little bit at these three things. First, um, we've sponsored a book uh, that's integrated into System Modeler. It's called Modelica by Example. And if, actually, if you follow this book, you will get kind of a good uh, introduction to, to Modelica building components in different domains. So it's, um, it's a good uh, resource to have. Together with this uh, book, there is also an uh, integrated, it's integrated into our help system. So for instance, if I open the book here and look at, look at that book here can see that directly. And if you're interested in, in a certain thing, say that you're interested in learning about inductor, you can type that up and the search will help you find things that are relevant to that topic. So uh, for instance here, inductor, you can see that that's a part of, of the library documentation. There's um, search, uh, a search result for uh, something that's in this book, Modelica by example. And there are things that are related to this inductor for the uh, system modeler documentation. And in the system modeler documentation, you can see that uh, there is uh, an inductor being used somewhere throughout this, uh, this document. So that's one way to, to help students get up and ready. The other thing is to, to help people develop their components. Usually when you build new components, you can do something like this. Here, here is a uh, model of a car. You drag and drop components, connect them together, build a system. Or you go the hard way around. You type in equations manually in Modelica code and you, get, you do something that looks like this. 
Well, to help you with this, uh, we've developed a interface in Mathematica where you can type up equations directly in Mathematica and then use our new super function system model create model to create something that does exactly this. So this equation that I have now has now been generated and is available as a model in system modeler. So it says there that I have a new block, an add block, and that's now available in my, my components. And I can use this uh, in a model like this and then directly simulate and see what happens to that, um, that model. So there we can try that actually input in the output for that thing. Um, moving on, uh, another thing that's important when you're learning a system is to get this kind of immediate feedback. So if you're developing a web page, you can see, okay, I typed this code, this is what it looks like. Now, um, that's something that, that we've had for a long time in terms of Mathematica with dynamic interactivity. Well, now we have a very similar thing in System Modeler 2 with uh, real-time simulations driven from Mathematica. So here I have a model. It's a very simplistic model. I take this sine wave, I add some uh, data by myself, and I look at the output. So I'll take this model and use it as an argument to real-time simulate. I can start that simulation, and then I attach from the dynamic, um, I take an angular gauge here that's, that's a graphics construct that's, that's directly available in Mathematica. Then I set up um, this signal to be the input in that model there. And then when I plot, um, I can then directly change the input and see how that affects the, um, the output there. So as I change the gauge here, uh, the sine wave will, will follow my signal. So in this way, it's, it's easy to build up an intuitive feeling for what your models are, are doing, and you can see how they react to your, your uh, stimulus. And the other day, I was just searching around. I found this video on YouTube, so this is kind of one user case of how people are, are uh, adapting, adopting a system modeler throughout uh, at Michigan Tech. Uh, there's a professor teaching with Mathematica and System Modeler, kind of helping people uh, get started with, uh, with a notebook interface and uh, in System Modeler here. Another such use case it is uh, Ben Gurion University in uh, Israel. Um, doing building models for uh, radio communications. If you're more interested in this story, um, Yehuda is here at the conference. You can talk about him, uh, talk with him about this, or you can follow this link and see see the full user story. It's also linked from the system model webpage. Um, to help kind of um, grow the interest in this area, we're writing a series of blog posts, and you can see these blog posts coming. Uh, through on, on the, the Wolfram blog. Here's an example from um, an electrical engineering blog that I wrote. Um, I'm taking a uh, high frequent and low frequent uh, signal, adding them together and then passing them through a filter. So if you look at this, You can see those, uh, those two signals there. You um, can use um, the uh, Fourier functionality in Mathematica to directly get out a uh, Fourier spectrum for that so you can see uh, what the frequency of that noise that I'm adding there to it. So it's, it's, it makes for kind of intuitive uh, explorations in, in different fields. If we look at a, an upcoming blog here, this is in mechanical engineering. And if we, if we just take a st step back and think a little bit about it, why are we using system model in education? W what's the, the th key, one of, what are the key benefits that it brings? Well, if I would hide the, 
the, the topic of this or the, the, uh, the label of this thing, will you be able to tell what it, what it does? Well, that system is, is, you can see that it's a system. It has some integrators, but it's, it's almost impossible to see what is the system that I'm modeling. So um, this, is, this is what you would do if you're in a uh, block-based world. You're using blocks to model your systems. Um, here's a link to where I found this. And, you know, it took me a couple of minutes to drag the, the components available in System Modeler to create the equivalent system. And then it took me another five minutes to set the, the correct parameters for, for how big the masses are. And here you can directly see that it's a suspension system. You have two masses, you have two springs, um, you add some force there. And if I simulate that, you can see exactly how, uh, how that works out. Just to show that it's the same uh, system that's being modeled. So you gain a lot of intuition for, for um, seeing how the real world system corresponds to the, uh, the model system. So to summarize that, I think uh, there is great opportunities for System Modeler. We've already taken the first steps. We're taking more steps. And um, System Modeler and Mathematica together brings a lot of um, new perspectives to, to the uh, education field. So welcome to part two of this System Modeler Applied presentation. My name is uh, Anneli Mosbey. I work as an applications engineer at Wolfram MathCore. And uh, today I'll be talking about a recent modeling project that we did in failure analysis, where we used uh, Wolfram System Modeler 4, which is the latest version of System Modeler, and uh, the Wolfram Hydraulic Library. OK, so first I thought I'd just introduce you to what I'll be talking about this, during this presentation. So um, first I'll introduce you to failure modeling with System Modeler basically just what we have to gain by using models in failure analysis. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the system that we modeled, which is the flap system of a Cessna aircraft. And then I'll talk a, li a little bit more about the hydraulics involved, about the model, and then finish off by looking at some simulation results and doing a failure analysis. Okay. So why even use models to understand failures in dynamic system? Well, as the uh, systems start to become larger and they become more complex, just take an entire aircraft as an example, it also becomes more difficult to understand how failures on a component level affect the function at a system level. Um, so taking the aircraft and the flap system as an example, how would uh, a leaking pipe somewhere in the flap system affect the plane's ability to extend or retract the flaps. So uh, using modeling and simulation, we can answer that questions uh, and more, such as how will a control system behave when a, when a component is malfunctioning? Will um, the failure become detectable during a test procedure? And can safety procedure A remedy failure B? And this last point has to do with testing and designing different safety procedures. So for example, if there's an electrical failure somewhere, will it recover if I do this or that? And then of course, there are more general advantages with using a component-based modeling approach, such as that you get reusable components that make it easy to iterate over many different designs. OK, so to demonstrate how to use System Modeler in a failure analysis, we chose to model the flap system of a Cessna aircraft. More specifically, we chose a Cessna 441 Conquest II. Um, and I'm sure everyone in here knows what flaps are on a plane. There are these hinge devices on the, on the wings. Um, and this is actually an image of the of Cessna 441 Conquest II. So the purpose of the flap system in this Cessna aircraft is to change the flight characteristics of the plane. 
So the pilot can change the angular position of the flaps using a flap selector switch uh, located in the cockpit. Um, so uh, changing the angular position of the flaps in turn changes the flight characteristics. More specifically, changes the lift and drag force. So for example, during takeoff, the, the flaps are extended to 10 degrees to provide extra lift force. Um, and in this particular type of plane, the uh, selector switch, the flap selector switch, has four set positions. Up, takeoff, approaching landing, and landing. And these correspond to 0, 10, 20, and 30 degrees, respectively. OK? And the images that you see here are actually images of the real hydraulic schematics of the flap system in this the Cessna plane. And it's actually what we based part of the model on. So it's based on a real hydraulic system. And I thought I'd just talk a little bit more about the system. Um, this first figure that you see here, this is the state of the hydraulic system during flap extension. And during flap extension, the bypass valve that you see up here, it becomes energized, which allows pressure to build up in the system. And at the same time, you have a flap control valve down here that also becomes energized, which connects these two hydraulic pumps and the reservoir to the hydraulic cylinder down here. Um, and during retraction, the opposite solenoid of the flap control valve is energized, just to swap where the uh, pumps connect to the cylinder. Okay. So this is the hydraulic system that our model is partly based on. So now I thought we should take a closer look at the actual model. Um, the top level model in this case is hierarchical, which means that it contains submodels. in this case six of them. And I thought we could take a closer look at this model in Model Center. So let me just right click here and open it in Model Center. Okay. So this is the top level model. And you can see the six different subsystems here. We have the pilot, the electrical system, the landing gear, power plant, and then finally the two systems that are based on the hydraulic circuit I showed you before. We have hydraulic power and the flaps. So how do these compo components in System Modeler relate to each other? How do they communicate? So we have two engines and the power plant model. And these connect to two hydraulic pumps in the hydraulic power model, which in turn provides pressurized fluid to the flaps and to the landing gear. Um, we have the electrical system. It contains a number of limit switches and solenoids, and they receive, um, it receives sensor data from the other systems. And then we have the pilot model. Um, and the pilot receives uh, signals that he can observe or control, for example, the angle of the flaps. Okay. So now you know a little bit more about the model. And this image here just shows which parts of the hydraulic system that make up the hydraulic power and the flap subsystem. So it's been divided into two separate models. And I thought we could just uh, look at these more closely in turn, starting with hydraulic power. So we go back to model center. So this is the hydraulic power model. Um, these uh, light blue and white interfaces that you see around the edges are connectors. These are hydraulic connectors. And then we also have electrical connectors. And these round gray ones are rotational mechanical connectors. So you can see here that this model is made to connect to several different domains, which is quite typical when you're modeling a system modeler. Um, this model also contains several um, components with failure modes. And this is how we've injected different failures into these um, models. For example, we have the basic pipe here. And going into the component mode of this model, we can see that it contains a number of switches. And each of these switches represents a health state of the system, of the pipe. So we have, for example, the leakage switch, restricted switch, the blocked switch, and the normal switch, which is the healthy state. Okay, so which one of these switches is used, um, that is, which is the health state of the system, 
that's determined by a failure mode parameter that we've decided to call FM. You can see it down here. And here you can also see the different uh, options that you have. You have OK, blocked, leakage, restricted. OK, so if you set this failure mode parameter to, for example, 1, which is the blocked state, then the medium will be routed through here and through the blocked switch, and the result is a blocked pipe. OK, so moving on to the flap system. Um, this system also contains a number of uh, components with failure modes, uh, the pipes that you saw in the previous model, and also these wires and the mechanical rods. Um, it also contains, besides the hydraulic and electrical connectors that you saw in the previous model, it also contains a, a translational mechanical connector that uh, connect to limit switches in the, in the electrical subsystem. Okay, so let's go back to Mathematica. So now you know a little bit more about the model and the system that we model. So the next step is to do some simulations and then some failure analysis based on that. And for that, I have selected a few different scenarios. And these are, first of all, nominal operation, which is the case where everything is working as it should. There are no malfunctioning components at all. And then we inject a hydraulic failure, a mid-air electrical failure, and then we use that same mid-air electrical failure and try to test the safety procedure to see if that um, remedies the problem. So let's start off with the nominal operation scenario. Okay? So in this scenario, like I said, uh, all the functions are, are fully functioning. Uh, there are no problems with any components. And this first plot that you see here shows the, the actual flap angle and the flap angle commanded by the pilot. So here you can see that they pretty much match not counting the time it takes for the flaps to extend or retract, of course, because the movement is not instantaneous. Okay, and then in these second plots, um, you have the pressure development in the hydraulic circuit and the voltage signal at the down solenoid, which is the solenoid that controls the extension of the flaps. Um, so note here how uh, the pressure builds up during the extend and retract periods, and then once the desired position is reached, the pressure immediately drops. And looking at the electrical signal, you can see how the um, voltage peaks uh, coincide with the flap extension. So let's compare this scenario with the different failure scenarios, starting with hydraulic failure. So in this scenario, we have a leaking pipe in the flap subsystem. And I showed you before how the pipes are modeled. So all we have to do now is go to the flap subsystem. We click the model, the, the pipe, where we want to inject the leakage. And then just change this failure mode parameter to 2. And that's all we have to do, and then simulate. And looking at the simulation results here, we can see that uh, looking at the pressure plot, that the pressure in the system is significantly reduced. And the consequence of that is that flap movement becomes significantly slower. And you can see it in this first plot here that the flap angle doesn't quite keep up with the commands that are issued by the pilot. And of course, um, that the flaps move slower than normally could be problematic in cases where um, fast action is needed. For example, if you're approaching the runway at a wrong angle and that angle has to be quickly adjusted, then you could use that extra uh, lift and drag force provided by the flaps. Okay. And then we move on to the mid-air electrical failure. So in this case, we have uh, injected a pin short into the up solenoid in the flap control valve. I'll show you how this is modeled. Okay, so we go into the flap control valve and to the up solenoid and here we can see how this is modeled. So it contains a number of electrical ideal switches and a number of different resistors. And each switch again represents a different health state of the system. <coughs> okay, 
So for example, if you choose uh, the pin short scenario, uh, when you choose um, set the failure mode parameter to two, then the pin short switch here will close and all the others will remain open, which means that the electri elec electrical signal will go through here and to ground. Okay, so let's look at the simulation results for that. Here you can see that the system actually behaves okay as it does in the normal, uh, nominal case um, initially because uh, the circuit breaker is isolated from the um, short to ground until the moment the pilot tries to move the flaps back up and that occurs around here. So before that everything works as it should and you can see it also in these other plots here that the pressure development looks as it does in the nominal case and so does the voltage signal. Okay, so but when the, the, when the pilot tries to move the flaps back up, then the circuit breaker trips and the pilot loses all control over, his fla over the flaps. And this failure would actually mean that the plane would need a longer runway because the flaps can't be positioned for landing to provide that extra lift and drag force. So let's talk about modeling safety procedures with that electrical failure as an example. So a possible safety procedure in this case could be to um, move the flap selector switch to landing position and then reset the circuit breaker because the circuit breaker uh, would be isolated from the pin short when it's reset. And then the plane could hopefully be landed safely. So how is this modeled? Uh, we've modeled this so that when um, the flaps are in takeoff position and they get stuck there, even though the pilot commands, um, commands them to move back up, then uh, the flap command is overridden and set to landing position. And at the same time, the circuit breaker is reset. And I can also show you how this <coughs> looks. This is the pilot model, and this is where the, uh, the emergency flap extension component uh, is. And you can see that this um, safety procedure component also has a failure mode parameter. And here that parameter decides if the pilot follows the safety instruction or if he doesn't. So to see the effects of this safety procedure, we can just change this failure mode parameter to, uh, okay, it's already set to zero, but setting it to zero and then just rerunning the scenario would show us the effects of this triggered safety procedure. Okay, so looking at the simulation results here, we can see that it has the desired effect. And once the circuit breaker is reset, the flaps can be moved to landing position and the plane could hopefully be landed safely. Okay. Okay, I don't think I have time for an extensive summary, but um, I just wanna say that uh, when we did this model, when we created this model, of course we made assumption regarding the for example, the electrical design and parameter values. But uh, this still shows that modeling has great potential to be used in failure analysis, um, to explore different failure scenarios like we did here and to see how faults can be detected and to um, test and design different safety procedures. And I have, for those of you who, who will download this presentation, I have a few links here if you're interested to learn more about failure modeling and, uh, and modeling and system modeler in general. Okay, so thank you for listening. Okay, so in, uh, in the previous presentations, uh, my colleagues show uh, the different use cases that, that you can have with system modeler. So you can create uh, very complex models. And in, in this presentation, I'm, gonna, I'm going to show what you can do with, with those models once uh, you want to take them out of, of the, of the uh, system modeler or mathematical context. So in system modeler, we basically provide two alternatives to take out your models. One is uh, once uh, everything is ready, you just export a simulation executable. So this simulation executable is, is it's a, like a, any program in your computer, it's just a, it's an exe file in Windows. That, uh, that contains everything that you need to, to simulate your model. It, it has a simulator, it has a, a, even a server. So you can just uh, the 
copy this executable to, to any other computer, uh, launch it, and, 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 you, and you can't uh, uh, perform any, any, any uh, you can run your simulation, basically. And the second alternative is by exporting uh, what is called an, an FMU. FMU stands for Functional Mockup uh, Unit, which is a standard um, that has been developed and is adopted by, by many uh, simulation uh, companies that works for uh, ex exchanging models. So you, you can take one system model model, uh, put it, export it as into this format and take it in, into any other tool supporting the standard. And I'm gonna show you a few demos of this. The first case that I would mention before it was, uh, I have a model, I export the simulation executable and, and, and I want to use it. So the, the, the simplest way of, of doing that is, is by uh, connecting to the, to the simulation executable uh, through the TC, to a TCP IP protocol and you can develop uh, your own application that uh, through this protocol uh, connects and you, are able to, you will be able to set inputs, uh, read outputs, and, and control the, the, the whole simulation. <coughs> and the, the, what, how, how flexible is, is, is this uh, protocol? So just for you to have an idea is, is what actually Mathematica uses to, to connect, uh, to control system model models. So in, in, into Mathematica, it's, it's already built in all this, all this functionality that allows you uh, to, without needing of writing anything else, just uh, execute Mathematica models and, and you, you can uh, do uh, uh, all, all the things that, that my colleagues have shown before. But I wanted to show you a, 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 um, a case in which uh, we take the, the the executable, and we grow a small application that connects to the to the, to the simulation and, and uh, give us a, a different way of interaction to the to the model. So hopefully, all my demos work without problems. So what I have here is just my terminal, and I took where is I took this electrical model, which is it's, it's a simple. Uh, RC filter that has a, a variable resistor over there, uh, which I set uh, the value of the resistor through a, an input U. And I have a pulse voltage here that goes through the RC, and I'm reading the output voltage. And I have some sensor here to, to get the, the, the input voltage. So if I simulate this model uh, within simulation center, I can see that this is my, my source, and this is the, the filtered output. So what, what I'm gonna do is, is take uh, that simulation executable that I already exported, I launch it, so it's, it's listening to, to my local computer on, on a specific port, and I have a, an application that, that we did, uh, it's uh, with, uh, it's, it's called uh, processing. If you know it, it's, it's, it's a kind of uh, a Java based that allows you to do graphics. So uh, what we can see is, is that the, now, now my, uh, my program, my, my processing program is connected to the simulation executable. And, and all the interaction that I defined here is, is through the mouse. So if I scroll, if I move the mouse down, it just uh, runs the simulations. So, so what, what I'm doing is retrieving data from the simulation executable and, and, graph, and making a graphic in this way. And I'm using the x-axis of, of, my, of my application to, to define the, the value of this resistor. And, and I can see immediately what's, what's the effect that it has on, on, this, on this simulation. So you can... Uh, very easily in, interact with with, your, with with a model in, in this way, so I can stop stop change values and and I can play with this. Uh, and so uh, 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 what you can what you can do is is you can define a complete uh, your own program 
that uh, uses all this model that, is, uh, that has all the logic behind it and present it uh, the way you, you want. This is, this is another example in which I took the, the model of, of a three tank system and I, and I wanted to make an application that, that shows how it behaves. Unfortunately, this program had a, for some reason it's not working. And the, what I used to, 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 the, to design this uh, controller, but basically what, what, what I wanted to show here is that I can monitor in real time the, the level of the three tanks and control the simulation in, in, a, in a similar way as, as before. So it's possible to, to build, like, let's say, a, a panel in which, uh, you, uh, to which you can interact. And, and, and if you are, let's say, b building a, a, the model of, a, of an airplane, you can just uh, drag uh, c components and, 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 and use it as, as, as it was the, the real airplane. Other way in which you can interact with, with models is that mm, system model or, or that, that has uh, behind the modelica language uh, allows you to, to call external C functions. So if you have legacy code and uh, it's written in C, you can easily plug it into a model and, and, and use it in, into, into the modelica context. One of, uh, and and since, you, since it's just C code, you can just Put, it, put everything into a DLL and, and create a, a Modelica library on top of that. So one, one of uh, these use cases is for those who have been downstairs in the playground, we, we have developed the, this library, it's called Model Plug. That, uh, it, it's a DLL that uh, interfaces to an, uh, an Arduino board and communicates through USB. So once, once you have uh, uh, set up your, your diagram in, in System Modeler, you can easily configure the Arduino and start reading and writing signals. I have one demo here that hopefully is gonna work. And since everything is homemade, uh, it's very easy to break, so I hope it didn't, didn't break when I'm transported from downstairs here. What I have here is it's, it's an Arduino board, which I made a, a small panel here that I use uh, for, for different control purposes. And I re replicate that into a system modeler model using this library. So as you can see, you, I have four knobs that are, that, uh, are sensors. And let me zoom in a little bit. And those are these four uh, inputs that you see here. I have four LEDs that uh, are represented by these four uh, digital outputs and two uh, digital inputs. So just uh, as simple as this, you, you can uh, start reading and writing signals and put those signals in, into, into System Modeler. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm reading the three, three of the knobs, these three, and I'm, I'm put, putting them into, into Modelica filters. So uh, to, re to reduce some noise, so it's just dragging and dropping, set the cutoff frequency. And then on the other side, I have another Arduino board here that uh, has three servos. Oops, that's fold. There are these three components. And what I need, just need to specify is which uh, serial port they are using. I just want to be sure. It's COM6, this is COM5, COM5, COM6. So when, when once the, 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 the model is built, uh, and it runs automatically connects to the Arduino boards, configures the Arduino boards, and allows me to send and receive signals, and and it's not working, let's see why. If 
you have been downstairs, I, we, we have other demos using this library. So if this doesn't work, you can always step uh, to, to the playground, and I will show you some more advanced demos of it. Okay, so. Yeah, the, the servers are not working, but what you can see there is that I'm, I'm is reading the signals that I'm, that I'm moving from here. So I have some problem in this other board. Uh, so I apologize, and it, this is a good excuse so you can check the other, the other demos downstairs. Okay. And the last option that, that I mentioned before, it was exporting as F FMUs. So that just uh, a system model that allows you to take this model and just export it so, so you can import it into any other simulator that, that supports the standard. So what, what I have done in this case is I, I took a, a tank model, I exported uh, from system model in, into an FMU, and then I have a national instruments, very standard, which is it's capable of, of running FMUs. So what I'm going to do is launch in very stand which uh, is already set up to, to read the, the, FM, the FMU that I, that I exported. Okay, so this is the very stand that uh, is took the system model model. <laughs> yeah, so you can easily t take your model and put it into other simulator. And just to summarize, uh, you can't, uh, there, there are plenty of ways of, of uh, taking your models from system model and put them into other contexts. And or even mix it with, with, uh, with your, your own software. It can be done by just calling external functions. You can also use model plug to interact with hardware, or just take it into other simulator with, uh, through the FMI interface. Uh, 